you ever find yourself feeling somewhat frustrated because however hard you try, you just cannot seem to simplify down a network of resistors? Yeah, me too. Several of my students come to me saying, can you help me do this? And so the aim of this video is to give you some tips to zoom through the process of finding the total resistance in a circuit. You know, it's not as hard as those students of mine seem to think it is. To get good at resistor networks, you have to be totally clear about what happens when you have two resistors connected in series and parallel. In series, the two resistors just simply add together to give R total equals R1 plus R2. Resistors in parallel are a little more tricky. Let's call that R1 and R2. This time, the total is this rather odd formula, 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 equals 1 over R total. Now, a little trick here, if R1 equals R2, then the value of RT is simply going to be the value of one of the resistors, R1 or R2, divided by 2. So if both resistors are 10 ohms, then the total resistance is 5 ohms. If both of them are 2,000, the total resistance is 1,000. Having gone over the basis of series and parallel circuits again, it's now time to launch into a series of about four examples that get progressively harder. If you stay till the end, I'll show you how you can find two or three examples that I've worked up for you to try with solutions so that you can check your work. When you have to simplify resistor networks, the first thing to do is to make sure, obviously, that they're all numbered. The second thing to realize is that this takes practice. And the third thing is to always look for combinations of resistors that you can say are absolutely definitely in series or absolutely definitely in parallel. Well, many students, when they look at this for the first time, will say, oh, look, R1 and R3 are in a line. They must be in series. But that's not true. So if we consider the current going through R1, it comes out of R1 and goes into R2. But there's also current coming through R2 which comes up through this junction and also goes into R3. Therefore, the current in R3 is bigger than the current in R1. And of course, anything in series has to have the same current all the way through it. So R1 and R3 are definitely not in series. When they've recovered from that little shock, they'll go on to suggest, well, R1 and R2 must be in parallel. Now, that's a better suggestion. And the reason this is true is because the legs the legs, as it were, or the component leads, if you want to give them the proper names, on the left-hand side of the two resistors are connected together, and similarly on the right-hand side. And you can see that being highlighted there in the rather fetching purple colour. So R2 and R1 are in fact definitely in parallel. That means we can simplify this down now. We can replace R1 and R2 with 1 over RT equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. So let's put some values in. R1, 20 ohms. R2, 20 ohms. R3, 10 ohms. So coming back to the combination of R1 and R2 then, that gives us RT is 1 over 20 plus 1 over 20, which equals 2 over 20. And that means that that combination, R1 and R2, can be simplified and replaced with a 10 ohm resistor. So that means that our circuit now breaks down to a 10 ohm in series with, would you believe, another 10 ohm. And that, of course, gives you a simple answer of a 20 ohm resistor. Therefore, this whole combination can simply be broken up into a 20 ohm resistor. In this next example, we have four resistors. I've decided to put them all as 10 ohms and... You can see that R1 and R2 at the top here are clearly connected in, in series with each other. There's nothing to draw current in or out at that point there. So R1 and R2 simply just add together to give us 10 plus 10 or a 20 ohm resistor. Similarly, we can see that R3 and R4 are also connected together in series. And so they're going to add together to give us, would you believe, another 20 ohm resistor and then these two pairs in series are connected across each other by these purple wires remember that's like the ends of the little branches 
just physically connected together in parallel. So the top combination is in parallel with the bottom combination. So what we have then is two 20 ohm resistors in parallel, which perhaps you can remember using the 1 over RT formula is going to break down to, would you believe, a 10 ohm resistor. Now, I think that's always, I always think this is a little bit interesting because we have four resistors connected together, which we could just replace with one resistor. So why would you use four to do that? Well, that's a subject for another video. Although this circuit might look a little more daunting, it's actually really quite straightforward. If you remember the two rules, look for obvious parallel bits, look for obvious series bits. Some students with this one suggest that R1 and R3 are in parallel. But they're clearly not because the end of R1 is connected to R2 like that. So we have this extra resistor in the way. So R1 and R3 are not in parallel. In fact, the only really obvious combination in this, in this circuit is R1 and R2. So we can replace R1 and R2 just with a single resistor. So then the circuit becomes something like this. We've replaced R1 and R2. Everything else is staying the same. So this is still R3, this is R4, and this is R1 plus R2. Now it's really straightforward. We have a simple parallel combination, as we've done several times, and then you would just add that to the value R4. In this example, we have an actual exam question, which I've modified a bit and put actual resistor values in. So most students, when they see this, will say that these three resistors are in parallel. Maybe because they kind of look like they are. But it's not true, is it? Because if they were parallel, the top of each component would be connected together without going through anything else. And as you can say, there's there's a 5 ohm resistor in between the top of the 10 and the 20 ohm there. So they're definitely not in parallel, those three resistors aren't. The only thing you can say with any sort of certainty at this point is that these two resistors here are in parallel. So now... We will just use our traditional 1 over RT formula to find out what the combination of a 10 ohm and a 10 ohm. If you've been paying attention, you'll know straight away what that is. It's 2 over 10, meaning that RT is in fact 5 ohms. So we can replace those two resistors with a 5 ohm. Here's one, as they say, that I did earlier. Now it's a question of identifying again what's definitely in series, what's definitely in parallel. Well, the only thing you can say here is that the three 5 ohms are connected in a line. They will all have the same current flowing through them. When the current gets to this point, it's going to split like that. So the three 5 ohms are clearly in series. So those three will add together to make 15. So then this circuit simplifies down to become this circuit. We have a 15 ohm in series, parallel, I mean, with a 20 ohm. So the Total resistance then is going to be 1 over RT is 1 over 15 plus 1 over 20. And if you work that out, RT comes out as about 8.6 ohms. So all those five resistors could be replaced with an 8.6 ohm resistor. That's the end of my examples. Check the description below. You'll find a link that will take you to three examples that I've worked out for you to try, along with solutions on a separate page where you can check to see if you really do get it. That's it. Don't forget to like and subscribe and tell all your physics chums about my channel.